Hello. Well, it's time. It's the first time I ever put it on jacks. As you can see, I don't have a fancy car lift or nothing. I just have these regular jacks and I got these uh, big, what are they, 12 ton jacks right here. Harbor Freight. Anyway, that's it. I usually go up incrementally. I have these blocks of wood. Just got them out of a dumpster, actually. <laughs> Construction. But just to show you what I like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I count this as nine. So that's how high I go up. Because... I did that on my ZJ, but uh, this, as you start working on it, it's going to come down. So it's probably about a foot of ground clearance. Yeah. I always keep a jack underneath each side because if something collapses, you want to be able to uncollapse it. And getting it under could be the issue as well. Another thing I wanted to show you was, check this out. Yeah, you see that? That's a axle jack. A little compartment. That's, everybody has it. So I fit this uh, axle jack in there. Axle jack in there. Well, no, it's a regular jack. Floor jack, that's what I meant. I mean, I, I kept that little plastic piece that comes with it out of the box keep that uh, thing down another thing I keep in here is a telescoping lug wrench and that is a uh, 17 millimeter and 21 millimeter the 21 millimeter is the uh, or actually 22 millimeter 22 millimeter is the, uh, the size of the, the lug nuts on the Jeep so I'm still trying to get this thing to come down yeah, over time because it'll squeeze so I gotta keep, hold it hold it hold it hold it hold it and then let go and then it closes <laughs> yeah anyway I, I actually keep two in there two uh, telescoping lug wrenches I this right here the 22 a lot of uh, common ones are 23 but I noticed that they were fitting pretty loose on these uh, lug nuts so I got the 22 actually my, my 22 socket was fitting good on there so that's that's when I started looking for these and that so I've figured out that you got to run 22s that's my tool set from, from Home Depot from Husky I got it on a Black Friday sale $99 um, with the economy the way it is I don't think we'll ever see those prices again but it's got everything in here got your torch drives Phillips I wouldn't say everything everything but it's got most of everything that's put that in there it's got sockets oopsies that's long ones that deep sockets as they call them <laughs> anyway I'm just gonna leave that like that for now this I also keep this inside the Jeep I don't know if you noticed that when it was in there these are pretty much every kind of that's, that's pretty much what you need nowadays I don't keep that in the Jeep. That I use for the calipers. But anyway, today I'm installing TerraFlex. Uh, it's a budget lift kit, two and a half inch. And uh, as as I was reading instructions, it says right here, this kit is optimized to run 35 inch tires. If running 37s, you need this kit. So that slowed me down by a week. So I had to put everything back together. And anyway, uh, I got the uh, this kit. And that's, uh, that's what it is. That's the uh, part number 
1959-300 and that's this kit here so basically this uh, two and a half inch two and a half inch uh, lift becomes a three inch lift I guess with this you put these extra pucks in there and extra spacers I don't know if that's just for the bump stops or or what but basically it'll keep the 37 inch tires from shoving into your fenders but um yeah getting started and um i don't know how many videos how many little shooting sessions i'll have but this is uh this is how i usually start i'm trying to think how many lift kits have i done i've done mine i've done a friend's doing this one again or this one now so yep all right so this is lift kit number three take talk to you later okay so the right side um, what is this called sway bar links has been removed so that's out of here I, I, I like to keep the uh, the nuts with the uh, where, where in the holes that they belong <laughs> so anyway but so I've disconnected the bottom one and I'll go to disconnect the top one this is a six millimeter hex but you can't get it in there well i can anyway i uh i dropped it and it's down there i notice the sketchiness of it <laughs> it's it's on on uh on jack stands so we're good there but uh you got to kind of compress these springs a little bit bring it up so I brought that one up and that you need to relieve pressure so you can disconnect the uh, axle I mean the sway bar links anyway drop the nut and I'm not one to get underneath there safety first so I, I keep the magnet near me and I, I let the magnet do the the, the the scary stuff the dangerous stuff so anyway cheap magnet I don't know how much it was at Harbor Freight but keep these handy I usually keep it in my pocket and don't don't try not to get underneath the vehicle too much anyway I'll go ahead and uh, remove this sway bar link and call it good go to the next step okay so I removed the sway bar links that's both right side I disconnected the track bar at the axle side and then let's see left side so I disconnected and uh, removed the uh, sway bar link and now this uh, right at the control arm this is a bracket for the brake line it says remove and discard pry open anyway so so I removed in this removed the uh, the bolt but boy that thing is it's tough I've been struggling at it for a while I mean, these are the things they'd never tell you oh I glaze right <laughs> over it it should be easy anyway so what I did here on the right side was like I use a C-clamp. Let's see if I can show you this way. C-clamp. I don't know if you saw that, but anyway, C-clamp, and then I've been using these two pry bars to kind of gently, <laughs> gently pry it open between that one this one sometimes both of them at the same time you need to basically stabilize the, the bracket so it doesn't move and then you can start to pry it open but anyway it's I'm still uh, struggling at it that's that's what I do <laughs> but anyway just to show you all right take it easy okay so some of the next steps are loosen those bolts uh, I tried <laughs> They're, they are very tight, so I haven't loosened them. It says remove the top bolt on the, the top of the shock. I didn't do that either. 
remove this this uh, bolt right here that I did and lowered it that I did and I want to kind of show you that so I use uh, blocks of wood and maybe even a little jack to kind of work uh, work the jack back and forth back and forth back and forth to get it lowered and um, as you can see here and disconnected that which is about 10 inches down and the spring is actually loose all right so okay it's out spring is out so i can start working on that and let's go take a look at the other side and that that's as far as it's going to go down but up uh, okay well shoot that one's out too it's just not as low that down over here but um yeah <laughs> i was trying <laughs> underneath i couldn't get it out i just said you know what let me just try it without so i know i get a hard time something about the bearings and whatever i don't know this is a budget build it's supposed to be easy anyway so just showing you how easy that was and i think uh when you're when you're trying to lower that you know like the left side or the right side you just uh jack the other side and i believe yep see how the other side's uh, kind of coming down just a little bit not much but that's just by jacking the right on the left side the right side comes down and vice versa so that's already already down so that's how you can play with the the lengths of the uh, axles because that you're gonna need to get that spacer in there or up here I don't know I have to read instructions but yeah if I was trying to put in bigger springs that's what I would need to do but yeah probably even disconnect the opposite ones but I have a uh, I have a uh, spring compressor, but I'm trying to avoid using it. We'll see what happens. All right, make it easy. Okay, so I've jacked up the left side. As you can see the front view. Jacked up the left side. <coughs> Axle's uh, lifted hard. And that dropped the right side. <clears throat> okay so so you can see here this is the spring <clears throat> spring in all the spaces <laughs> all right i did this just so i could show the camera <clears throat> so if you want to put 37s in you need extra bump stops and it says three inch budget live but um <clears throat> the, it's compensating for the front being uh, a little lower than the than the rear. So it, <clears throat> the rear is going to be two and a half inch lift, and the front's going to be three inch lift. They don't tell you that. So anyway, so as you can see, <clears throat> go ahead. And, it's going to be kind of hard with one hand, but basically. That, see how it sits they, they want you to see the you know the, the logo on the outside so it, it does seat in there it's got a it's got some some uh, some holes you can kind of see it back there so it's got the holes <coughs> see, so this it's kind of sits right there and these have to sit inside of their little holes as well <laughs> it's kind of hard <clears throat> anyway let me just kind of see if I can do that kind of show you <clears throat> all right so it is coming in but 
before we do that, so you see the uh, spring, you kind of have to get this in. I'll show you show you in a minute what I mean but see how it, it started already and it's in there so put the phone down and uh, show you all right so I've seated it make sure that this is seated in there this is seated in there so this has to be seated up here this has to be seated to this <coughs> this these uh, little pucks that they give you well <laughs> they don't give you <laughs> the ones you buy <clears throat> they go into the little hole in here and then uh, provided is this little like a flag wrench and then uh, that goes underneath um, down inside of here so I have to figure out a way to Get that in there but i can't do it with the, the camera but you get the gist of it <coughs> let, me, let me see before i start worrying about that <coughs> let me see if i can lower the jack it's gonna probably tighten up the other side so as i'm lowering the jack slowly I mean, I've done it on a lowering, self-lowering, cracked it. I want this <clears throat> seated just right in there. Check this good. There he goes. It's off. It's off the jack over here. Now, the front spring is seated. This is all seated. All seated. All seated. And uh, then I bring the jack over to this side, crank it up, do the same thing. But, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in before I do that. All right. Talk to you later. All right, so jack this side, left side up, picked up the, install the bolt for the lower shock. Oh, by the way, yeah, so as you can see, put a little Loctite on there, a little Loctite down here. You can see that. This is seated properly. You can see there. You want your spring. Yep, no special tools, just jack it up. Everything's seated right. This side is seated right. Install the uh, the uh, lower shock bolt through. I haven't torqued it yet. And of course, where, what kind of 301 steady video would this be if I didn't have my good old friend the ratchet strap so I just hooked it up down there to the axle on the right side and the frame actually right here to the uh, track bar reinforcement got the bolt and the flag nut here and li lining up the uh, track bar right in here. I know it's it's not the best. Should have a better track bar, or at least some kind of relocation bracket. But I don't have that. Uh oh, <laughs> well, I'll forget this figured out. But basically, the ratchet strap came off. So you got to just get the idea. All right. All right, I'm back. So I ended up tying one end of the ratchet strap on the left side in that hole. 
a lot of people put their anti rocks in there. But, uh, anyway, hooked up the uh, ratchet strap to this side and had a kind of half cock it in there. And that's it. Shove the, whole, shove the bolt in there. He can actually, can actually loosen that up now. And it's in. Hammer that in and hammer that bolt in the track bar. Put the flag nut in on the opposite side. Something like that. Skin this way. But anyway. You get the idea. Alright, later. Okay, so I started it. A little thread locker in there. And it's in. Track bars in. I just need to go get the torques. And you get that's how you uh, re reinstall that. I got to torque that down, torque the other one down, and then um, that's the uh, the new sway bar link. It's gonna hook that up right here to the sway bar itself. You don't reinstall the old one, but you do use the old hardware. And I know this ain't right. I need to get a extensions, like a two and a half inch extension. But um, otherwise, that's that's the gist of it. That's pretty much it on the front. And the next will be the the packs. So all right, back there. All right, so the front is pretty much done. I got the uh, extended sway bar. I've got the uh, bump stops. I got the uh, three inch uh, spacer the only thing i don't have is the the uh, shock absorber extender um didn't come with a kit it basically says either install your favorite uh shocks uh, your own shocks so i'm gonna get some uh, some shock absorber extenders I, th I think i saw some on craigslist so <laughs> anyway i'm gonna get those coming and I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on it. Shocks are fine. That shock and springs are designed together. We're going to leave it like that. Same thing with this. This side. Track bar is reconnected. Extended sway bar link is installed. Bump stop. Spacer. The only thing again is no no uh, shock absorber extender so this will be fine for the street i hope <laughs> you know that's probably not recommended i wouldn't recommend it but for what i do you know going to the grocery store and back whatever that's gonna work okay and uh, for now i'm just gonna leave this as is i don't have to put it up on jacks like that i gonna put the tires back on and I'm going to get to work on the uh, the back side and, um, you know, drive it as needed. And uh, whenever it gets here, all I have to do is lift up just each side and and uh, get it going. So I don't have to do all of this and get the springs out or anything like that. Nothing difficult. So all the hard part is done. All right. Now on to the back side. Okay, so here I am. I just removed the uh, back tire. It says step one of the rear, lift it, support the axles. Yeah, I'm not doing that yet. This bracket here, oh man. That's not a 15 millimeter boat. That's a 
that uh that's a 13 millimeter that that kind of threw me off but um anyway so i continued on set the set the e-brake and then uh, put the vice grips on each on both sides and then uh and uh, squeeze this through this wasn't so easy but i finally got it out but uh, what they want you to do is back over here they want you to reroute cables under cross member and fuel lines so i was like what is that what does that mean okay and then once you do that you reconnect the uh the thing but i want to show you before i continue so uh well shoot like a better term okay right here uh, you set the parking brake set the, put the clamps on there and then these uh come right out anyway but um same thing on the other side. But, um, show you inside what this means. There you go. Creeper. So, here's where you squeeze it. Squeeze this out of here. And anyway, you have to, this is the cross member. And for reference, this bracket, was back inside of there that's a 13 millimeter it was back inside of there so you have to uh, once you once you disconnect it you route it under these fuel lines and here's the cross member that way all this section is not interfering so you'll gain some distance for your uh, parking brake cable but basically that's it's basically what that's about so i'm curious how that's going to work over here but i'll figure it out but just so you know that's that's how uh that's what they want you to do before you even drop the axle because once you do that you're gonna stretch these out and destroy the lines you don't want to do that all right take it easy all right, so the next step it says to uh, reroute these cables i didn't bother with that that i of course i've already disconnected that shown you that already i didn't loosen these uh, control arms leave it alone so i removed the sway bar links so the 16 millimeter stud key yep you need that 18 millimeter uh, bolt and uh, i mean nut and uh, what you call it wrench so both of those get the sway bar links and of course these uh, brake brackets on the axle so let me show you real quick so uh, these sway bars so this was uh, mounted up in uh, up in here like that and down here where the heck is it? skin dark <laughs> anyway but uh so i removed that got it out of the way and let's see these brackets let's see can you see that so right here is where the bracket is disconnect that you know to release that uh that bolt and uh, get the bracket out of the way because when you drop the axle you don't want these uh, cables stretched out with it that would be bad so it gives it somewhere some uh, some slack while you do that same thing on the opposite side disconnect the sway bar link and remove the uh, the bracket with the uh, parking I mean not the parking brake that's a regular brake and a wheel speed sensor and then after that, once you get the uh, sway bar and that, I'll disconnect sway bar link, brake uh, line, and once you once you get that done, then oh yeah, that's right. You got to do the track bar, and then the track bar. So disconnected this track bar at the axle.
so I just reinserted the the bolt in there and just get that going. And then the next step is to jack this up and uh, drop the uh, drop the shock both sides, and that'll bring that down, and this will free up the spring. So that's basically where I'm at. Okay, sure enough, once I disconnected the shocks, this one, it wasn't too bad. Just dropped it a little bit. So I supported it with a jack. Got the bolt neutral, pulled it out. There's a bolt right here. Let me see where the bolt is. Well, you can see the bolt. <laughs> right on here somewhere. Anyway, you notice how if this bracket had stayed in, it belongs somewhere way over there. It, it got stretched quite a bit so that's why you need to take that bracket that uh, bracket off and then the right side same thing once i took this one off boy it fell see how loose this is oh. all right now you see all that <laughs> that wasn't planned <laughs> barely touched it yeah anyway so the left side fell over barely touched the right side and it fell over too but that's basically uh basically it now you're ready now i'm ready to install the rear uh spacer and bump stops all right talk to you later all right so i got these in that was kind of a pain <laughs> down there <laughs> but um yeah i haven't put that in yet and no i haven't put that in yet that's skipped over and put in this little plate right here little button uh, button heads and then next is the uh, need this sh shoved in the inside of here and this is the actual threaded threads for that and these longer ones are for the uh, 37s this it came with the shorter ones if you want just the 35s minus these anyway so just to show you so I installed these plates on top of the axles and up here you can see well maybe you can't there you go see the uh, that's the uh, the spacer that goes between the coil in the frame same thing and same thing both sides that's the uh, the locker cable and that's the uh, the breather tube it goes up there yeah, I didn't even see that in the instructions. It came off on its own. I just hope that the locker works. But it looks okay. Took a look at it. Anyway. So that's it for now. Gonna continue on these bump stops. Not later. On to the next step. So jacked up the axle and uh, hooked up the uh, drive shaft, I mean the, uh, hooked up the, uh, the shock absorbers and both sides, so they're in, that oh, should start, also uh, seated these in the right position, it's, it's clocked just like uh, the back, I don't know if I showed you uh, Spacers, I mean for the uh, bump stops are in Anyway, so ratchet strap time hooked up the ratchet strap to this side right here And it goes Over here This is for the, uh, for the track bar And I've lined up the hole And let's see here Come 
That's getting in there. We'll get that persuasion maker. Where is the persuasion maker at? Oh, there it is. Down on this side. He's used it last for the uh, the shark was over. All right, where are you? All right. So put the flag nut in. Start to. Uh, Start turning it. That's where I'm tightening. Yeah, it's kind of dark. <laughs> Let's just turn it out. Anyway, you get the you get the idea. Tighten it up, and uh, see you later. All right, just check it one last time. Rear springs. Solid shocks. Um, yeah, we reinstalled these uh, bolts on the back of the uh, brake uh, line cables, uh, brake lines, and let me see, installed sway bars, installed the bump stops, and then lower the vehicle and retorque. Let's see, so, all right, so this is the bracket. Right here, you gotta disconnect that. Get, that loosens it up. So I've installed the uh, sway bar, the F bigger one. Same thing with the opposite side. It's all pretty much done. I just need to install the tires and lower it down. I never broke torque on these. So I don't know contemplating whether I should uh, tighten them up again or what but anyway um, just kind of show you the uh, final outcome so this the uh, that uh, um, say locker connector that thing kind of ripped out so it the little tang kind of broke in there but so it doesn't hold so well so i just put some blue rtv kind of hold it in rerouted the breather tube hooked it up right there kind of show you some more so as you can see these these have uh instead of going up back in there and over on the back side drop them down here and it's pretty much what the instruction says and then reconnect the bark and brake cable let's see bark and brake cable that one was easy to install the right side i don't know what happened but it was not easy <laughs> you can even see the little metallic marks of uh i don't know what would happen with the uh, vice grip but it wasn't right so i had to use a pry bar and right in here <laughs> right there it was uh you can see the the metal from the pliers i must have fought that for like 10 minutes anyway um over here yeah i uh wrap tape around that fuel line and then and I tape the two fuel lines together, some duct tape, just to kind of prevent. I had initially started back here. You can see, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you probably can't, so hard to see. But anyway, anywhere where the fuel lines ride pretty hard, it's 
a good idea to put a little tape on there to kind of keep it from chafing. If you see the tape chafed off, it'll replace it. So it'll, it'll buy you time in case uh, it's starting to ride on other stuff. So that's transfer case. I did find a few scratch marks, but not much from this last trip. But anyway, so it's official. I'm, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to make an attempt at the Jeepers Jamboree 2022 70th annual. So you know, I'll be out there. Maybe, maybe uh, we'll see. It's going to be a one big party. I'm still contemplating three or four days, but anyway this thing is done I just need to uh, get the extenders make the shocks uh, a little longer I'm not gonna spend a bunch of money in it you could spend fifteen hundred two thousand dollars on shocks maybe more <laughs> I'm not gonna do that wife wants a kitchen so I'll give her a kitchen. She gave me a Jeep. I'll get her a kitchen. Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Just gonna slap the tires on and lower it and call it a night. Y'all have a good one. Okay, the lift kit is all done. Like I said, the only thing uh, I need is the. Uh, the the track bar doesn't show too bad it's just a little bit over to the right just a tad not too bad anyway get over here and activate this light okay there it goes Let's see about this side probably have to straighten out the steering wheel doesn't look too bad that one's pulled over just a little bit yeah maybe about half an inch to an inch gotta get a track bar relocation bracket or something but for now budget this will do looking not too shabby I'm gonna drive it like this with the 33s and when I go wheeling I'll put the 37s on that looks pretty good Let's go this side real quick I can't get far enough anyway not bad for a day's work Take it easy. 123 dollars. Ouch. Hmm. That's getting better. I wonder if it fits. Seventeen fifty. That's my speed. Oh, this one actually gives you the dimensions. Hmm. Stay tuned. Figure out if this works. 